Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to take a look at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com in the topic of momentum and collisions titled Impulse Momentum Change Table. Now this is intended to be kind of a review of material you've already learned. So let me quickly go through the stuff that you should have learned and we'll talk about how to implement it. So first you should have gone through momentum. I'll link a video here where I went through momentum. Um, momentum is how hard an object is to bring to a stop. Uh, if it's moving fast or it's big, it's got a lot of momentum. This is the key. Momentum is mass times velocity. We're going to do that a few times during this activity. Momentum is mass times velocity. Then impulse. Impulse is a uh, is uh, causes a change in momentum. Sorry, impulse causes a change in momentum. Impulse, which is capital J here, is a force acting for a certain amount of time, and it causes a change in momentum. We're going to use both those concepts force times time, and that an impulse causes a change in momentum. In other words, however much impulse there is, that's how much the change in momentum, how much the momentum changes. All right, so here is the apprentice level. Uh, you can see, yeah, yeah. you can see uh, that it asks an object at, it starts out with an object at rest. So that's really important for this apprentice level to notice that because we're going to be asked to find the final momentum over here. And you can only do that if you know that the object starts out with zero uh, momentum. This object experiences a force for a given duration of time. So here's force, given duration of time, resulting in an impulse that causes a change in momentum. The final momentum is different than the initial momentum because there was a change. And then you click and you uh, put in your answers here. So we know that impulse equals force times time. So when we're solving for impulse, we just do force times time. 5 times 2 is 10. The units are all up here. Okay. We know that impulse causes a change in momentum. So if the impulse is 10, the change in momentum is 10. Impulse and change in momentum will always be the same because the impulse is causing the change in momentum. 10 units of impulse causes 10 units of change of momentum. If the, if the object changed by 10 uh, units of momentum and it started out with zero, well, then it's going to end up with 10 as the final velocity. Okay, so we can work backwards in the second row here in row B. If it ends up with 6 and it started with 0, that means it changed by 6. To have a change of 6 means it needed to have an impulse of 6. How do we get an impulse of 6? Impulse of 6 with a force of 12. We have to have something times 12 equals 6. Or we could rearrange our equation, dividing both sides by force to leave change in time by itself. So we get change in time equals impulse divided by force. Sorry, I curled my F there. So impulse divided by force, 6 divided by 12 gives us 0.5. If you need to use your calculator for some of the ones they give you, feel free. Okay, so then we have an impulse of 72, a time of 0.1. Well, same thing here. If we divide both sides by delta t, we get force equals impulse divided by delta t. Okay, we plug in the impulse of 72. We divide by 0.1. That gives us 720 newtons of force. Well, if the impulse was 72, the change in momentum is 72 and the final momentum is 72. Um, and then our final one here, we see we have a change in momentum of 50. That means our final momentum will be 50. Our impulse will be 50. If we have a change in time, that means we're using this equation. So the force equals 50 divided by 0.5. That's going to be 100. After you do your division, you can always go back and check and make sure that the force times the time gives you the impulse and that'll let you know you did the problem correctly. All right, moving on to the master level. All right, so in this one, you can see that we now have an initial a momentum that is not zero. Okay, that's the only change between these two. So let's get to it. 
Force, force times time, four times two gives us 10. The change in impulse is the same as, change in momentum is the same as the impulse. And here we see we had a change in momentum of 10. If we started with eight and we changed it by 10, that means we're gonna end up with 18. Okay, well, if we started with three and we ended up with six, that means we changed by three, which means we had an impulse of three. What time would give us uh, the, an impulse of three? 0.25 or one fourth. 12 times 0.25 gives you three. Uh, this one, let's see, we'll need to do, we've got impulse is 72. So the change in momentum is 72. If we have an impulse of 72 and a time of 0.1, that gives us a force of 720. Uh, the initial impulse, if we ended with 100 and we had a change of 72, that means the initial must have been 28. Because if we have 28 and we change by 72, we'll end up with 100. Okay, and our final problem here, um, force times time, 20 times 1 half gives us 10. It means a change in momentum of 10. If we change by 10 and end up with 50, we must have started with 40. Because 40 changing by 10 gives you 50. All right, moving on to the wizard level. The wizard level is a little bit different. Okay, so let's read through this a little bit more carefully. An object with mass m, so now we're throwing mass into it, is in motion with a velocity of the initial. Remember that momentum P equals mv. So if we're dealing with both velocity initial and, and momentum initial, we can use this equation, or when we're using P final and V final. Okay, but don't mix them up. Don't do V initial and P final. That wouldn't work because you got to be at the same time, the same instant. Okay, so then we have to go through and solve this. So mass times velocity gives us the momentum initial. If it's going to change by six, that means we're going to end up with 16. So now we have to be able to solve this equation for velocity. That would mean dividing both sides by mass. And so we get momentum over mass. So momentum is 16, mass is two. 16 divided by two is eight. So this would speed up from five to eight. All right which gives you a change of momentum of six, going from 10 to 16. All right, next problem. We see we have a initial velocity of three, an initial momentum of 12, okay? So if we're solving for mass, we haven't done that yet. So let's, if we wanna solve for, for mass here, then we're gonna to need to get rid of the velocity, okay? Which will get, cancel the velocities, and we get m equals p over v. So P12 over V3 gives us a mass of four. Okay, so now we can use our final velocity times a mass of four. Four mass, seven velocity gives us 28 for our final momentum. That means we needed an impulse of 16 to go from 12 to 28. All right, next we see we have a mass of two. We have an initial momentum of 26. So momentum divided by mass gives us 13 for the initial velocity. And double check, mass times velocity does indeed give us momentum. Um, if we use that same two uh, kilograms over here with the 23 velocity, we'll get 46. For our final momentum, to go from 26 to 46, we need to have an impulse of 20. And for our final one here, uh, impulse or momentum of 10, mass of two, we must have had initial velocity of two. I think I said two, I meant to say five. Five times two gives you 10. To change from 10 to 50, we need 40 impulse. 50 momentum, 5 mass, gives us 10 velocity. Okay, once again, using this equation.
All right, have fun puzzling through those levels on your own with your own set of numbers. Um, and if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. If this helped you get through and understand this uh, concept builder, uh, go ahead and click that like and subscribe. And we'll catch you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beard Man.